So welcome, Solomon. Uh, first of all, thank you um, up and for doing um, up and, up and this interview um, up and with me today. Um, the, the, the kind of um, overarching uh, subject or the topic is up and malchut, which it translates to um, up, up in the kingdom. So um, um, one kind of interesting way that I thought that um, up, up and we would kind of dive in is talking about flags. Um, something that you um, um, uh, have 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 um, um, a true passion for, um, and which I think that um, is is a very cool uh, take on um, on kingdom. So first, thank you. Um, um, so very first is um, um, how did you get into um, 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 enjoying studying flags and kind of yeah. Well, first, uh, thank you very much for having me. I've really been enjoying these videos, especially the uh, recent one with uh, the scholars, Joe Ornstein and Michael Fraud. That was a great one. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on to talk about my nerdy little hobby. Uh, it's, I think it really uh, began, I was watching uh, like the 2002 World Cup uh, and seeing uh, them in their uniforms, which had a lot to do with like their national pride and uh, incorporated some aspects of their flag design. I thought it was a really, really cool way of like, of showing the national pride. And some really cool uniforms like are still around uh, that teams play uh, with in the World Cup, like the Croatian uh, uniforms with the checkerboard pattern taken right from their flag is super cool. Um, so I think it was like that intersection of like sports and uh, design that like led me on the path to like, oh, um, they're trying to represent their a lot of these teams are trying to represent their flags on their uniforms and uh those ha flags have meaning and it's a great way to like start learning about uh a, a country's history or the uh the values that are important to them and i just thought that was a really cool way of of, of learning about different nations that's very cool that's very cool so um 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 you know kind of flags are kind of the the um 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 of outward facing kind of um, um, uh, open presentation, I would say, or, you know, or, or symbol um, of, of different kingdoms and different countries. Um, are there any kind of um, um, flags that, that like you kind of see as, as like, as like um, a really great um, um, example of like kingdoms or stuff like that? Uh, yeah. So, uh, there are a few kingdoms that still exist nowadays, you know, monarchies. Uh, three that come to mind are uh, Morocco, uh, Bhutan, and the Netherlands. Each of these has a pretty rich history. Um, I'll just kind of go like the Sparknotes version of these uh, when I was thinking about different flags of kingdoms that exist nowadays. Uh, so for Morocco, from about like, uh, well, to describe the flag first, it's essentially a red sheet, a red field. Uh, with an emblem in the middle that's the uh, it's called the seal of Solomon one of the reasons why I picked it obviously um, it's a green uh, pentagram five-pointed star so from the mid 17th century until like the early uh, 1900s it was mostly just pure red without the emblem uh, this red as uh, many flags typically do symbolized uh, strength valor uh, a common theme for a lot of flags that have this color uh, it also related to uh, Islamic religious leaders, like the former imams of Yemen or the former uh, Sharifate of Mecca. Um, it was just a color used in a lot of their imagery. Um, the green, uh, the green pentagram is known, again, as the Seal of Solomon. Uh, green is, broadly speaking, a common uh, symbol of Islam. For example, in the Quran, uh, green represents paradise. So you'll see a lot of green on uh, a lot of uh, flags from predominantly Islamic countries. Um, the five points of the seal are also said to represent the five pillars of Islam, uh, faith, prayer, charity, fasting, and pilgrimage. Um, and it's a really cool flag. Um, it's pretty unique in that uh, for a lot of Islamic uh, majority countries, they usually, if you like look at the, a lot of Middle East flags, um, there's some combination of red, uh, red white, and green. Um, or black, actually, uh, black, white, red, and green, some combination of those four. Uh, Morocco just really just doubles down on the red and has a little splash of green, so it's a little bit more unique in some of the 
uh, the more Islamic, uh, predominantly Islamic countries in the area. Um, Bhutan um, is a really cool flag. It is only one of three uh, world flags to have a dragon on them, which is just a really neat animal. Uh, the others being whales, and if you look very closely, uh, Malta. Um, Bhutan loose, uh, translates to the land of the thunder dragon, which is amazing. That's just a really cool thing to know. Uh, uh, so the flag is uh, yellow, orange, and the white dragon in the middle. Um, so yellow is the royal color of Bhutan, uh, which signifies secular authority of the king, uh, who is referred to as the dragon king of Bhutan. Um, again, amazing. Uh, the royal garb it traditionally includes a yellow uh, scarf as well. So yellow is a very uh, important color in that nation. Uh, the orange is the uh, Buddhist, uh, symbolizes the Buddhist doctrines of specific sects of Buddhism. So you have the secular and you have like the more religious aspects um, that are combined on the flag. And then bridging that, uh, bridging those two is the dragon, which symbolizes obviously the name of the kingdom. Um, Bhutan, land of the thunder dragon, dragon on the flag, uh, comes from their mythology uh, and their history, which I'm sure I, you could spend uh, a lot of time learning about. Uh, but the dragon is white to symbolize the purity of the Bhutanese people uh, who may be different on the outside, but pure within, which is a really, really cool sentiment. Um, the dragon also is grabbing jewels on the flag, uh, which symbolize the wealth and perfection of the country. Um, so they, they, they bake a lot in there uh, with just like one symbol and a couple colors. Uh, the coolest fact I think about this is that all of this is written into their constitution. So they were like, this is so official that we got to have it in the founding like documents of our country. Uh, like not even the American flag has like, it's written in the constitution. It's just part of like the US code. Um, so they were like, no, this is, this is going into like our official like nation's uh, constitution, which is cool. Um, the third one, uh, Netherlands. So Netherlands is a um, horizontal tricolor. Uh, which just means three colors. Uh, uh, it goes red, white, and blue. Um, so this one kind of looks like you took the French flag and just turned it on its side, um, but there's a lot more going on. Uh, and actually the Netherlands flag came first. Um, so red, white, and blue, it didn't start out that way. Um, if you have familiarity with like the Netherlands at all, you'll know that orange is a very important uh, color for them. The, again, their, their national soccer team, that's like the color that they wear. They're called the Orange, the Orange, uh, however you pronounce that. Um, their ruling monarchy is like from the House of Orange. So a few hundred years ago, uh, when the Dutch led by Prince William of Orange, uh, side note, Orange didn't originally refer to the color. It's just this place in Southern France. And, but then over time, the terms got conflated uh, together. Um, so anyways, yeah. Uh, they, a few hundred years ago, the Dutch rebelled against Spanish rule. Uh, so they created this flag based on the colors that uh, the rebels were wearing, orange, uh, white, and blue. Uh, it became known as the Prince's flag. Um, and for a while it stayed that way, but about a hundred years later, uh, so the mid 1600s, uh, the orange was replaced by red, supposedly because the orange dye that they used at the time uh, kept fading to red. So they just gave up and was like, this is red now. Here's a really interesting way of designing a flag. Um, so, um, this flag, I chose this country in particular because it should be of particular interest to you, Seth, and anyone else living in the, uh, New York City or just the tri-state area. Um, so you might see this influence fairly regularly. Um, at one point, New York City and the surrounding areas, um, were actually a Dutch colony, uh, called New Netherlands. New York used to be called, New York City used to be called New Amsterdam. Um, early to mid 17th century. Um, so this was right around the time that the prince's flag, the orange, white, and blue uh, version of the Dutch flag uh, was in vogue. Uh, so the modern day flags of New York City, Albany, Jersey City, uh, and uh, Nassau County uh, and others are all based on this flag. So if you look at those flags, you'll see orange, white, and blue. A lot of them are just uh, vertical tricolors, but they all have the orange, white, and blue. And that's because it has Dutch origin. So you can thank the Dutch for some of your city and state flags. That's 
I, 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 you know, there, there are so many layers to, to, to like, you know, to, um, I'm into flags and, you know, it's, it's, you know, something that like, like, like um, I'm, and we always see, but like, we never really, you know, and dive into it. And it has such a rich history. Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, like, um, you know, I, you know, I am, I, I am sure that, you know, every flag has, you know, um, a rich history, but like, I mean, those three, like, I'm like, that's yeah, so cool. It's just pretty neat. Like you learning about a flag, you learn that why, uh, Bhutan is called Land of the Thunder Dragon, which is amazing. Yeah, um, and, it's funny. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's funny that you mentioned that. Like, it's they're they're sort of in the background, and like it's this design aspect you don't really see or like really take to heart. Um, it actually reminds me of a, a podcast called Ninety Nine Percent Invisible, uh, with uh, I think the host is Roman Mars. Um, he goes into a lot of like just general like design things that we take for granted each day, from architecture to you know, uh, what have you, uh, he did a, uh, he's done episodes on flag design and he actually did a Ted talk on like terrible, like city flag design, which I highly recommend you check out if you're interested in this, you or anyone watching. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's just, you don't think about it. Like there's a lot that goes into these things. Oh, for sure. And, and, and shows, you know, you know, decades, if not centuries of, of history. In like exactly. one, in one like you know like um, image, it's crazy. Um, so here's like um, um, a three part question: uh, What do you think is the most interesting flag? What's the most um, um, and unique slash like crazy looking ish flag? And uh, what's your favorite? Wow, um, I think I think my answers probably would overlap. Um, I'll just start with my favorite. Uh, it's Barbados. Um, they have a, so it's blue, another tricolor, blue on the edges, uh, yellow bar in the middle, and then in the middle of that bar is just a black trident. So I just think it's a really cool symbol. Like no other, I don't think any other like nation's flag on earth has a uh, trident as the symbol. Uh, the symbolism is also really cool. It's, uh, they call it the broken trident, which symbols it's like break from colonialism, which is just a really neat, neat idea for a flag. Um, and uh, yeah, just the colors work well together. And it's just, it's a trident. It's just a cool, cool symbol. Um, for a unique flag, um, I guess we're just talking about like nation, like world flags. Um, there's a couple that come to mind. Uh, Nepal, it's one of the only ones that ha- I think either the only one that's not either like a rectangle or a square. It's kind of like if you like just push two triangles together, um, almost looks like a pennant in a lot of ways. Um, that's a really unique flag uh, for a world flag. Um, the Seychelles also uh, is a really unique flag. It's kind of like, it looks like a sunbeam, like, like a rainbow erupting from the bottom left corner of the flag and just like bars to the end. Um, that's a really cool uh, design aspect. Um, yeah, those are, those are two that come to mind. And the first question was like, what is the most, or another one was in, most interesting? I don't know. Uh, I think they're all pretty neat. I think they're all really interesting. Uh, some are more interesting than others, but I think the ones I mentioned are, are particularly cool. I agree. I'm, I'm gonna show them uh, on the screen. The, Say I, I, I know we've seen them, you know, and throughout I'm, I'm in the video here. Um, so, you know, I think my um, um, up and wrap up question is um, uh, what advice um, um, and would you give to someone who um, um, wants to, you know, take um, a deeper dive um, um, into flags and stuff like that? Yeah, so there's a few options. Um, there's like an international and North American um, uh, organization for like the study of flags. Uh, the North American one uh, is called the North American Vexillological Association, uh, NAVA for short. So you can, they have a website, they have like uh, a journal that comes out fairly regularly about flags and cool flag design. Um, if you're on Reddit, there's a Vexillology subreddit, um, mostly people sharing their flag redesigns. So you have to like actually like make sure you're looking at real flags um, and not just like, oh, that's a cool flag. Oh, it's just someone's personal drawing. Um, 
So that's a cool one. Um, honestly, just like pick a country that you're interested in or like want, want to like travel to and learn more about it. it. There's probably a lot of history baked into it that you either might not have known the full story to or are learning for the first time. Um, start with the, if, if you're in America right now, start with the American flag. Like it's had many iterations over time. Why is that? Like, why do they decide to like change it up so much? Um, yeah, any, any country you're interested in, uh, just look it up, look at the flag. That's awesome. Uh, I'm gonna, um, I'll end those things now. I think that's it. I'm especially the, um, and the idea of, 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 of the, um, um, and redesign. That's kind of like, like, like a interesting take on it, but. Okay. Yeah, the, a lot of it is like, people are redesigning like not great city flags or state flags. Uh, I think that's a popular theme on the subreddit. A lot of a lot of US state flags are just what's called seal on bed sheets. It's just literally like a plain either blue or white uh, field with like a symbol in the middle or a seal more, more uh, accurately. Uh, it's just not a great design. It's just they took whatever like seal they had uh, for their, their state and just like put it on a sheet. Um, so people are really having fun with uh, saying like knowing about the state's history or like what's important to them. Like, can we come up with a better designed flag? A lot of them are really good. That's why I love them. Um, I'm in the Maryland flag. Oh, very Maryland good. flag is very incredible. Good. It's so unique. Um, it's very controversial, but it's, it's a great one. I think it's a great flag. Yes. Well, make sure to check out, um, um, I'm in the video, I'm, I'm in coming out soon. Solomon, thank you so so much I've been for this. I I um, I learned I've um, been so much, and I have notes to um, I've been take away for 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 for, for um you know um I've been studying up um I'm on flags. So thank you, really thank you. You're very welcome.